Welcome back to this next MetPy Monday in a series on satellite archive data, uh, specifically the data that we've been recording these past couple weeks from our uh, class server uh, that is available through NOAA. And so to begin today, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to utilize Jupyter Notebooks in order to first, first look into this data set and then be able to visualize uh, the uh, visible satellite imagery that's contained in our data set. And so to begin, we're going to need to import uh, a module to help us out. And so we're going to use the NetCDF module. So from NetCDF4, we're going to import data set. And so this module is going to allow us to read our NetCDF data that we obtained from the class server system. And so again, to run these uh, cells, you hold the shift, hit the enter key, uh, and that will create a new cell and run that cell. And so we see our, our number one here, that it's completed. And so we've now successfully imported this data set module. And what we want to do then is to read in our data. Now, previously we read our, or we downloaded our data, and I've put that off into a folder for safekeeping. And so I'm just going to create a simple file name here, a uh, variable name here. That happens that I have to go back a directory to find this data in the proper directory. And that I started it with sat. And so I typed sat and hit tab for tab auto completion. And then we know we have some goes data in there. And so I'm going to hit tab again after typing goes, which allows me to then get a listing of the various files that start with goes in this particular directory. And specifically today, we're going to want to look at visible satellite imagery. And so we're going to want to look at band one. And so if we go ahead and use our mouse, we can select then this first one in our list, which will then give us access to this particular file. And so let's go ahead and run that cell, shift enter. And now we want to use the module that we brought in to read this data. And so we're going to save it off to a variable name called DS, short for data set equals, and then we're going to type data set, which is the name of our function that we imported from NetCDF. And then we're going to read our file, which we've saved off in the, as the, the variable name file. And then we're going to read. And so we want to put in quote marks R here for our read functionality. And so if we go ahead and do shift enter, that will then kind of create the link between our Jupyter notebook and our file contained on our system. And now we can start interacting with our file and determine what's actually available within our file. And so if we go ahead and type ds.variables, and again, this has very classic naming definitions for a NetCDF file. So all of our variables are stored within uh, this, this method called .variables. And if we shift enter, it gives us a lot of different information in this really uh, difficult to read uh, format. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap list around here. And so list is the function in, in uh, Python that will give us a nice listing of just the variable names. And so we see we have a whole bunch of different names, three of which are going to be critically important to us, with a fourth that's sort of important. Uh, first and foremost, data. This is where our visible satellite data is, is contained within our file. So that's going to be important. And then for plotting purposes, we're going to need lat and lawn. And finally, we're going to also need this variable time at the end when we round out our plot uh, to make sure that we know then when this data comes from. And so let's go ahead and inspect a little bit more what's contained within our variable data since that's where our visible satellite data is located. So let's go ahead and type ds.variable and then open square bracket quote mark data and we'll go ahead and run this and this will give us metadata or information about the data. Of course we need to actually type variables so that we actually get the full uh, method out there. So ds.variables data, and we see that what we have here are raw satellite counts. Well, what are raw satellite counts? You know, I'm used to thinking about satellite data in terms of either brightness, temperatures, or albedo, or reflectance of some sort. And so we need to figure out what this is. And unfortunately, none of the metadata that's contained within our NetCDF file contains this information. And so we must go to our favorite search websites here. And so I've gone to Google here, and we're going to search for the string goes 13 raw 
data format. And so when we search this GOES 13 raw data format, the first hit here is going to be the critical piece for telling us what's contained, what exactly this raw format is contained within our NetCDF file. So go ahead and click on this PDF. And what you may want to do is save it off locally so that you have it uh, for future use and don't have to find it via Google in case it goes away uh, on the interwebs. And specifically here, uh, we're going to want to look at or, or click on this link to bring us to the part of this PDF for how do I calibrate GOES Imager Satellite Data. Let's go ahead and click that. It's going to bring you down in the PDF uh, to where we have the data that's information about the area files that are provided by the class server. Now you may be asking yourself, well, but didn't we download NetCDF data? We did. But that data originated for us from these area files. And so what's contained in our NetCDF is basically a version of area files that have been formatted then into our particular NetCDF format. And so when we're working with this data, what we really want to work with is 10-bit data, or data that is between 0 and 1023. And so if we look under our NetCDF heading here, just at the bottom of the page, we're going to have to scroll to the next page. We find out that data in the NetCDF file is actually stored in a 16-bit format. And so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to convert that 16-bit format raw count to a 10-bit format raw count by dividing our 16-bit format by 32. And so then we can then further convert this 10-bit data to radiance or brightness temperature or reflectance depending on the channel and our desired output later. And so this is the critical piece of information here. The data stored in our NetCDF file is in 16-bit format, and we're going to want to convert it to 10-bit format by dividing by 32. So we want to go back to now our Jupyter Notebook. We're going to want to save off our data, so let's first go ahead and bring in this raw data. So viz underscore 16-bit is going to be the variable name we're going to use. Equals ds dot variables. Whoops typing not so good today so we're going to use the tab completion here to help us data and then we're going to want to bring in just the first time so we see that here our data is actually in uh, a three-dimensional format time y x and so here we're just going to pull the single time because we only have one element in that anyway and so we're going to save off our data on in the variable name viz underscore 16 bit and let's go ahead and plot or not plot but report out through the method max here the max value in this 16-bit form shift enter we go ahead and we get this output 25,056 for our max count in the 16-bit format but remember we want it in 10-bit format so let's go ahead and create a new variable called viz underscore 10 bit viz underscore 10 bit is viz underscore 16 bit divided by 32 right so from our PDF file here, we see that we need to divide by 32 to get to our 10-bit format. So we divide by 32, and let's go ahead and now print out our viz underscore 10-bit dot max, and we should be between 0 and 1023 for our max value, and sure enough, we are. 783 here is our max for this particular time of our visible satellite imagery. All right, so now we have our data in. We have it in in our 10-bit format. And now we need to go to plot it. But in order to plot it, we need to bring in our variables for plotting, specifically latitudes and longitudes. So let's go ahead and see what our latitudes and longitudes are by ds.variables lat. OK, and here we're going to print out all the data. So we're going to add in the bracket colon to print out the data. And so here we see a report out of our data. And we see some of the data has some really large numbers, this 2.14 e to the ninth. So it turns out that this data is projected in our geostationary projection. That projection means certain parts of our image are actually off the globe. Those off the globe values are represented by these really large values. And so when we bring this data in, what we need to actually do is we need to mask those values so that we don't have those real so that, that data in there. It'll make plotting a little easier a, a little later on. And so let's go ahead and bring in our longitudes, and we're going to bring it in in variable name lawn equals, and then, oh, what we need to do first, though, is we need 
a new module to help us. And so let's go ahead and import numpy as np. Because what we want to use here is we want to use the mask array element. So np.ma, and then we're going to want to mask certain values. So masked underscore values. Okay. And so now we can directly read in our data. So ds.variables. Here we're going to want our longitudes. And we're going to need to put in a value for our maxed values. And so we're going to go ahead and put in 2.14329. E to the plus zero 09. And that's going to mask all those values so that we don't use them in calculations or for plotting purposes. We're going to need to do the same thing to our latitude. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this line, switch lawn here to lat, and switch lawn here to lat as well. And we can go ahead and run this cell both importing numpy and then masking our values. So we see it ran pretty quickly. And now we have lawn and lat values. And if we print lawn here, we'll go ahead and see we have a couple dash here. These are those values that now have been maxed, uh, masked that otherwise would have been this really large number. And so now we want to go ahead and plot up this data just so we can see a little bit what this looks like. And so we're going to need to use our magic line matplotlib inline. And then import a couple of, of needed functions here. And so we're going to import cartapi.crs, the coordinate reference system, as ccrs. And we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then from here, we need to set up our map coordinate reference system. So we're going to call it mapcrs equals ccrs. And here again, we're going to want to use the geostationary. Uh, scheme so that because we know this is a geostationary satellite above a certain longitude and so this coordinate reference system is going to allow us to set up our proper projection and so again here we're going to need to add in a central longitude and so started started typing central hit tab it finished central longitude since it only has one keyword uh, or one argument here uh, that we need to put in and we know that goes 13 is situated over minus 75 uh, degrees longitude so we can set up our projection in that way. And now then we just need to set up three simple lines for plotting purposes. So we're going to set up fig equals plt dot figures. Figure one, fig size equals, and we're going to set up a nice big image here, 19 by 10, allow us to see our needed detail. Then we're going to set up an axis to plot on. And so this here, plt dot subplot. 111 is going to create a single image and we're going to set up our projection here equals map CRS that we set up earlier with our cartopi. And then finally we're going to plot our image. IMG equals axe dot IM show. It's going to allow us to plot it up relatively easily. We're going to plot up our viz underscore 10 bit data. We're going to use a particular color map here. We're going to just do a grayscale image and so we're going to use grays but we're going to want it in reverse order so grays underscore r and then we need to let it know where the origin is and the origin here is in the upper so origin equals upper this is all we need to get a simple plot and so we're going to go ahead and run this it takes just a little bit to, to run and now we've got a plot of our visible satellite data imagery we can sort of see the outlines here of mexico and the united states with our data up here, uh, our visible counts, our raw visible counts in 10-bit format. And we see here why we needed to mask certain values of our lat lawns because sure enough here we're looking out to space. In the next MetPy Monday, we're going to look at how can we refine uh, this image first by using uh, reflectance uh, instead of our raw counts from our 10-bit imagery. So we're going to need to look some things up for that. Uh, and then we're going to move on to then making this map uh, look a little better uh, through use of both uh, Cardipi and setting some extents in our IM show. Thanks for listening.